Yeah, it's recording, and I can skip out the first few frames of it. Start from the beginning, or? Yeah. Okay. Okay, my name is Steve Spence. I'm with Green Trust. I'm here with Jim Juzak of Woodhenge.org, and we are here today to talk about the Axle Flux wind turbine that we've built. And Jim, could you give them a little history of where the Axle Flux idea came from, please? Um, I started off with my middle school shop classes. I've been teaching middle school and high school shop for 26 years and I've always tried to bring in elements of renewable energy. The idea of building a wind turbine intrigued me and I went online and found Hugh Pickett's book, uh, The Small Wind Turbine Workshop Book or something like that, and it was absolutely fascinating. Uh, later on I found out about Dan Fink and Dan Bartman uh, with their articles in Back Home magazine and it went from using uh, tape drive motors and Volkswagen generators and things like that and designing our blades and using uh, the rub against the wheel bicycle generator with my sixth graders with one of the first experiments to actually trying to model uh, some of Hugh Pickett's designs. Uh, we chose not to use the model set up by Dan Fink and Dan Bartman because we didn't have a lot of Volvo parts available in our area. Uh, but I've worked a number of construction trades and there's a lot of plumbing parts available right off the shelf from the lumber yard across the street from the school. Uh, and we started to play with things like that. We did try to use 12-inch um, front disc rotors and found because we're in the great northeast that so much salt is used on the used ones that they were essentially rusted out completely. Uh, but one of my former students uh, owns a metal fabrication plant and he actually made the uh, rotor plates for us out of quarter inch cold rolled steel. Uh, we played with blade designs. I talked with some of the engineers from Southwest Wind Power and uh, they demystified blades down to the seventh grade or 12 year old level for me and basically said if you had the blades uh, of the correct length that an angle of incidence to the wind of between 8 and 12 degrees would be fine and that anything that they argued over uh, was points to the right of the decimal place uh, and that we could get power results from the blades made on our school table saw and routed and sanded by your 11 to 13 year old crowd uh, that would perform within 10 to 20 percent of what their blades perform. So we went from there. Uh, we're not done by any means with the prototyping, so I'm, I'm declaring that our unit is still in prototyping phase, although it does produce power. Uh, I've shared what designs I've had with as many shop teachers as I could hook into it, so we're asking for feedback from shop teachers and other people who have built this version of the wind turbine as they come up with different techniques of bearings and mounting and so forth. Uh, we've had some feedback from Dan and Dan about offsetting it so that it has physical control and high winds and uh, we've incorporated that into our latest version. Um, we went through and built a version with a, a former student of mine who's now a missionary in the Tuva region of Siberia and the pictures you'll see later on are pictures taken while he and I built it with the assistance of middle school students at the South Jefferson Central School in Adams, New York. And uh, we've had his prototype hung on an eight foot pole out in my yard for a year and a half just to kind of destructive test it to see what happens when it's just left out in the elements, what parts would rust or bind up or not spin anymore. Uh, we're still working on tail design uh, we're working on how much offset we need to do the physical regulation. Um, it does produce a fair amount of power. I, I would guesstimate easily 500 watts um, in 20 mile an hour winds, but we haven't had it hooked up and running on a building long enough to get uh, statistically reliable data. That'll come later. Uh, the lowness of the one out there, I have it kind of offset from our property a little bit, but it does uh, make me a little bit worried when it's spinning several hundred RPMs that some little kid could walk underneath it. I may have to put some snow fencing around it to protect it eventually. Uh, and that's basically it. We, we tried to keep the technology for this design simple enough so that a seventh grader could both understand it and operate the tools and equipment physically uh, as well as safely necessary to build it. Uh, the students wound the coils, the students did the encapsulation of the coils, 
the students um, cleaned and uh, glued the magnets to the rotors. And you'll see throughout there that, that they were involved in every process of this. Uh, that's about it. Steve, do you have any questions? Well, I think you've covered it pretty well. Uh, we will have uh, lots of pictures to go with this, a um, lot of description. You can find more information about the website at www.woodhenge.org and greentrust, G-R-E-E-N-trust.org. And uh, drop us a line and ask us any additional questions that you may have. Thank you.